Roberts. Oh, a sublime goal. Drop ball. That's unbelievable. Oh, what a goal. Just fabulous. That is special. Beautiful football. That is brilliant. The goal of his dreams! What a goal! Chiyoshi! Incredible! Absolutely terrific! Wow! Wayne Rooney out of this world! Carlo Ancelotti's first season at Chelsea had ended in double success. Their third Premier League title and the FA Cup both brought back to the bridge. All enough to convince owner Roman Abramovich that major investment was not required post-season. They did, however, complete a deal for the Brazilian holding midfielder Ramirez. He joined from Benfica in a deal worth around £19 million. Five senior players were released by the club as Ancelotti plotted his second season assault on the Premier League. I'm very excited because uh, we have a, a very good memory about the last year, about the last uh, celebration at the end of the season. We are excited to, to start a new season. Manchester United, meanwhile, placed the emphasis on youth in their summer dealings, signing three players all under the age of 23. Mexican international striker Javier Hernandez joined from Chivas. Central defender Chris Smalling from Fulham and the relatively unknown Bebe signed from Portuguese third division side Vitoria Guimaraes. Their boss was anticipating a new look to the Premier League. The established top four for the last few years um, is now under review. You can't say for certain who's going to be top four because I, think, I genuinely think that Man City with the money they spend got to be in there. They have to be in there. Not going unnoticed by Ferguson, his so-called noisy neighbours continued to flex their financial muscle. Roberto Mancini dived into the summer transfer market to the tune of more than £100 million, a total outlay dwarfing anything spent by their closest rivals. Arsene Wenger, meanwhile, continued his more considered approach to the transfer market. He brought in striker Marouane Shamak and defender Lauren Koscielny, but undoubtedly his most important piece of business was to retain the services of club captain Cesc Fabregas. His departure would have had a massive impact on uh, the belief of the strengths of the team and on his partners as well. He's a captain of the club, so it was vital for him to stay here. There was change at Anfield as Rafa Benitez's six-year tenure at Liverpool came to an end. In his place, former Fulham boss Roy Hodgson clearly relishing the opportunity. This is a, a very big club, a club with enormous tradition, and I'm convinced that uh, the chance to work here is the right thing for me at this point of my career. Replacing Hodgson at Fulham, former Manchester City and Blackburn Rovers boss Mark Hughes. While Aston Villa installed Kevin McDonald as caretaker boss following Martin O'Neill's resignation just five days before the start of the season. Despite avoiding the drop a few months earlier, West Ham parted company with manager Gianfranco Zola, bringing in Avram Grant, who moved on from Portsmouth following their relegation. Replacing Portsmouth, Hull City and Burnley were Newcastle United, West Bromwich Albion and Blackpool. I see us in, uh, within a, a, a group of teams knowing that where we need to get our points from and of course the, the ultimate aim is to become a, a stable member of, of the, the Premiership. We are going to try and play the same way we've been playing last year and going to every game with, uh, with the belief that we can win every game. Until you start you don't know how good you are, until it's finished you don't know how bad you were. So let's, have, let's wait and see and we'll have a go. That's all I can do, really. It was time to let the football do the talking. 
The next 10 months would be one of the most thrilling and unpredictable seasons ever. Champions Chelsea started their title defence at home to newly promoted West Brom and wasted little time hitting their stride. A hat-trick for Drogba and two for Maluda in a comprehensive 6-0 demolition of Di Matteo's side, bringing the baggies bouncing back down to earth with a bump. Blackpool travelled to Wigan Athletic for their first ever match in the Premier League and the boys immediately looked at home. Adam, near side is Harewood, Ormerod in the centre, Taylor Fletcher as well, Taylor Fletcher coming in, and it's Blackpool's first goal in the Premier League! A great start for the Tangerines on an opening day that just kept getting better and better. Can you believe that? It's 4-0 to Blackpool, what an incredible scoreline! A day to remember for Blackpool and one to forget for Roberto Martinez. The previous season's runners-up Manchester United began their campaign at home to the promoted winners of the championship, Newcastle United. Goals from Dimitar Berbatov and Darren Fletcher putting the game beyond Chris Hutton's side before old heads Paul Scholes and Ryan Giggs combined. Following an opening day goalless draw with Tottenham, Manchester City faced Liverpool in their second game of the campaign. James Milner making his debut after a protracted move from Aston Villa was finalised days before. His impact was immediate, supplying the cross for his former Villa teammate Gareth Barry to open the scoring. A Carlos Tevez double made it three to sink the Reds in a ruthless performance in front of the owner Sheikh Mansour. The widening gulf between the two clubs had never been more apparent. Following their opening day thrashing of West Brom, Chelsea were in no mood to take their foot off the gas. Wigan found themselves put to the sword again. They conceded ten goals in their opening two fixtures. Chelsea looked imperious, hitting six for a second week running. Ancelotti picked up the first Barclays Manager of the Month award after Chelsea finished the month top with three wins from three and 14 goals scored. Paul Scholes won the first Player of the Month award of the new season following a series of sparkling performances and his 150th United goal. Twelve months earlier, Harry Redknapp had presided over four wins from four at the start of a season. This time around, his Tottenham side had made a slightly more faltering start to their campaign. A win at Stoke, following a draw with Man City, before defeat at home to Wigan on match day three. For their fourth game, Spurs travelled to West Brom, handing debuts to William Gallas and deadline day signing Raphael van der Vaart, but they fared little better. Chris Brunk cancelling out Luka Modric, his opener. Much food for thought for Harry. Talk of Wayne Rooney's off-field problems dominated the build-up to Manchester United's trip to Everton at Goodison Park. A scintillating encounter ensured post-match chatter focused on the football. And Everton lead Manchester United! One one! Darren Fletcher for Manchester United! It's in from Arteta! Extraordinary! 3-3! Unbelievable from the Everton skipper! That fabulous comeback left United and Ferguson stunned. The second time in as many away games United had lost a lead. Rooney returned. Dimitar Berbatov. Berbatov! Oh, wonderful! Absolutely! Oh. 
2-0 after an hour, but Steven Gerrard dragged his side back into the match. And Liverpool were level in the... And Manchester United again have let a two-goal lead slip. United throwing away a lead for the third time in five games, but they rarely accept they're beaten. Amen. So United maintain their unbeaten start and the pressure on Chelsea, while a different September. A draw with Blackburn followed by victory against Wigan. And now they face Chelsea, who can... for City! 1-0 the final score, 25 goals in 29 games for Tevez, a first defeat for the defending champions. West Bromwich Albion had recovered well from their opening day mauling. They were unbeaten in September ahead of their trip to the Emirates and soon had the opportunity... Albion to take the lead here, has been wasted. A chance squandered, but Arsene Wenger's side were being uncharacteristically generous. The West Bromwich Albion have the lead! Bromwich Albion have a two-goal lead at Arsenal! From hung on for a famous win. One of two victories and a draw in September that saw Roberto Di Matteo become the first ever Albion manager to win the Barclays Manager of the Month award. Striker Peter Oden Wingy completing a memorable double for the club. It was the first time an Albion player had won that prize too. Chelsea continued to top the league going into October despite losing to City. And would move again. Same old Didier Drogba. Arsenal sick of the sight of him. Alex. Wow! Thunderous thump from Alex. All three points for Chelsea. No one is stopping that. Chelsea ruthless, already seven points ahead of Arsenal and four clear of second place City. Wenger left lamenting a fifth consecutive defeat by Chelsea in all competitions. All smiles for the Blues, but Liverpool went into their home game with Blackpool lying 18th. Anfield expected better. Body goes down, penalty Blackpool. Charlie Adam in front of the cop, scores! Blackpool lead at Anfield. Gary Taylor Fletcher, it's Nick through to Varney, it's a second goal for Blackpool! It was Liverpool's worst start to a campaign since 1953. But there was some better news off the pitch. The long-anticipated sale of the club by American co-owners Tom Hicks and George Gillette was finally forced through, but not before the legality of the sale was challenged in court. How you with the Excellent, very first class, sir. So, with new owner John W. Henry in place, Liverpool made the short trip across Stanley Park for the 214th Merseyside derby. A new chairman, but no stopping the rot yet. Coleman. And Cahill, the man for the derby, year after year. Arteta! about that for a strike. It looks like it's going to be Everton's day in the derby. A goal of some panache from Mikel Arteta. There would be more big stories yet to break at Liverpool, but Everton had the bragging rights. Sir Alex Ferguson stuns the football world by announcing that Wayne Rooney wants to leave Manchester United. We don't understand it. So I can't answer your question, why is he doing it? The player is, says he's adamant, he wants to leave. It was the latest twist in what had been a tumultuous season for Wayne Rooney. Problems off the field coupled with a loss of form on it, culminating with the striker handing in a transfer request before a dramatic U-turn just days later. Rooney would remain as a United player for now. Northeast rivalries were renewed on the final day of October after a season spent a division apart. Sunderland went into the game unbeaten in seven, but it was a nightmare encounter for fans on Wearside and one that will live long in the memory of the Newcastle faithful. A brace from Shola Amiobi and a hat trick from captain Kevin Nolan as Newcastle United simply swept aside Sunderland. United living their 
collective dream. 5 1 the final score. A late Darren Bent goal, no consolation at all for Sunderland manager Steve Bruce. Considerably happier at the end of October was Everton's David Moyes, his side chalking up three wins and a draw to move from 20th to 8th. The Barclays' October Player of the Month was Tottenham's Raphael van der Vaart. With three goals and an assist in his side's four matches, he was an instant hit. The build-up to Chelsea's home match with Sunderland had been dominated by the club's sacking of assistant manager Ray Wilkins. The headlines following the game wrote themselves. Nader Manuha. Oh, he's going on a slalom run! That's unbelievable! An extraordinary goal! From... There's Welbeck! Cole's mistake! Welbeck has finished it off for Sunderland! And it gives us an extraordinary scoreline! Chelsea's 100% home record ending in spectacular fashion and marking the start of a calamitous run of results for Ancelotti's team. Mid-November, and Tottenham made the short trip to the home of their fiercest rivals, Arsenal. They haven't won away against the Gunners since 1983. It was a record they rectify in a classic. Sensational finish from an impossible angle. Arsenal's player of the year so far has their goal of the year so far. Raphael van der Vaart, 2-2! It's quite a game, isn't it always? By van der Vaart, on by Kamal! 2-0 down, 3-2 up! Spurs at Arsenal! Absolutely extraordinary! A derby day they will never forget! Scenes of Tottenham joy and Arsenal desolation. A third home defeat of a season for Arsenal, who missed the chance to go top. Manchester United, meanwhile, maintained their unbeaten start of the season through November. Late goals against Wolves and Aston Villa, preserving a record dating back to April. Before a seven-goal demolition job on Blackburn Rovers sent them to the top of the league for the first time this campaign. Coyle, who picked up the latest Manager of the Month award. Three wins and two draws, Wanderers unbeaten in November. It was a Bolton double as striker Johan Armanda scooped the Player of the Month award. This balletic effort against Wolves, the pick of his three goals in the month. This programme is sponsored by Bet365. This programme is sponsored by Bet365. Chelsea began December in much the same. Nasri again, brilliant, beautiful football. Can they finish it? Oh, you bet they can. 2-1 Arsenal, they replaced Manchester United as league leaders. The first managerial casualty of the season came at Newcastle. Chris Hewton was sacked following defeat to West Brom, despite the club sitting 11th. Appointed in his place, the former manager of West Ham and Charlton, Alan Pardew. And he started by piling more pressure on Liverpool boss Roy Hodgson. Goals from Kevin Nolan, Joey Barton and a tenth of the season for Andy Carroll. The perfect start for a manager many Newcastle fans didn't want. Allardyce. First team coach Steve Keane was appointed temporarily before being offered the job full time. Blackburn and Allardyce had parted company despite Rovers sitting in a relatively healthy 13th place. And they'd reached Christmas six clear of Wigan in 18th and nine ahead of the bottom club West Ham, who now had just two wins in 18. Wolves became the first team to lose 10 matches, but four home wins kept them off the bottom. That was better than Birmingham, who'd only managed three in total. 
Arsenal faced Chelsea on the Monday after Christmas, aware that Manchester rivals City and United had both won the day before. Chelsea's crown may have been slipping, but they'd beaten the Gunners in each of the last four meetings. Chelsea's fragile confidence showed, and Arsenal made them pay. Three goals in a ten-minute spell either side of half-time, ending Arsenal's Chelsea jinx. It's three! Chelsea being crossed! And we're watching the period in the season where the champions are looking distinctly like ex-champions. 3-1 the final score, the extraordinary derailment of Chelsea's season continuing. They were without a win in six now. Manchester City manager Roberto Mancini won his first ever Manager of the Month award as his side won four out of five in December to move up to second. Samir Nasri's two goals against Fulham and stunning display against Chelsea helped the Arsenal star pick up the Barclays Player of the Month. A new year dawned, but the trials of Chelsea continued in the capital. Their first visitors of 2011 were Villa, another club struggling to assert itself in this most unpredictable of Premier League seasons. A pair of penalties meant there was nothing between the two sides at the break. It was all set up nicely for a dramatic second half. The two sides traded further blows before Chelsea thought they'd won it 3-2. Great save by... ...did an equaliser in stoppage time to deny the home side. Three all at the bridge. Roy Hodgson's time as Liverpool manager came to an end after his side's trip to Ewood Park. A 3-1 defeat, Liverpool's ninth of a season, was the end of the road for Hodgson after six trying months at Anfield. Club legend, former manager and fan favourite King Kenny Dalglish was quickly installed as caretaker boss, but even he couldn't immediately halt Liverpool's slump. Blackpool completing a memorable league double over the Reds and cutting Dalglish's managerial honeymoon short. One man who didn't feel the need to dip into the January transfer market was Manchester United Sir Alex Ferguson. The third goal in front of the cup is uh, yeah, a special memory and a memory I will never forget. It still remained incredibly close at the other end of the table, however. West Ham, Wigan and Wolves remained in the bottom three, but Blackpool, Aston Villa, Birmingham and Blackburn were still in trouble, none of them able to pull clear. victory for West Ham United in their penultimate match with fellow strugglers Wigan and the Hammers would become the first team to be relegated. Manager Avram Grant was sacked immediately after the end of the game. Manchester City meanwhile only goal difference kept them behind second place Chelsea. Carlo Ancelotti fired a year. Arsenal's season simply petered out. They finished fourth. Tottenham would confirm fifth and qualify for the Europa League if they could win their final match. Blackpool eventually went down 4-2 at Old Trafford, albeit after briefly leading 2-1. It was always going to be a tall order for Holloway's team to end United's unbeaten home record. Successful team in the history of the English League. Premier League champions 2011.